Well, good morning. I'm Jeff, and I'm an engineer. <laughs> and yeah, we think a little differently than most. You uh, see another car at a stop sign, I see another variable entering the equation. You see traffic congestion, I see a queuing theory problem, right? So when I graduated from high school on a Friday, I went to work on Monday at Delco Electronics in Kokomo, Indiana as a co-op student. I was pumped, all right? I was an engineering co-op student at Kettering University, and I'm a big fan of the co-op education model. When it, was, when it was time to graduate, they asked the co-ops the top three places that you'd like to work. And I didn't get any of my choices. All my buddies got all my choices, and I was pretty sure I had better grades than they had, right? But I got something much better. I was on the team that put the first computer on a car ever. Now since that time, the car's become the biggest, most powerful computer that you own. Today's cars have 50 computers, have 50 to 100 million lines of software code, and that's soon going to double. I earned, um, if you think about a, an F-35 fighter jet, for example, it has 24 million lines of code. An Android operating system has 12 million lines of code. So I completed a mechanical electrical engineering degree at Kettering, and one of the hardest classes for electrical engineering is field theory. Now, I had a professor, Jack Olin, for fields. Jumpin' Jack, we called him. He had a passion for field theory, and I did not. I couldn't see where I'd ever use this electromagnetic wave propagation stuff, and his uh, final was one question, and I'm embarrassed to say that I turned it in blank. It wasn't a good thing, but I, uh, I squeaked by with a C in the class. So fast forward a few years, I got to work on a startup JV with Hughes Aircraft to develop both the next generation military radar and radar for cars. So radar gives eyes to planes. Why couldn't we give eyes to cars, right? That's, uh, that was the concept. So for a young engineer, this was a very cool opportunity. So our very first radar demo was on a Cadillac in Detroit. And who was one of the very first people to have a look at this? It was my fields professor from Kettering. It was Jumpin' Jack. He'd become the chief electrical engineer for General Motors. So I'm seeing my career pass before my eyes here, right? I hadn't seen him in years. He comes walking across the parking lot, and he's 50 feet away, and he looks at me and he goes, Owens, you can't possibly have had anything to do with this car or this radar. You turned my final in blank. So after about an hour of walking through the car, what the radar did, he was convinced he did a little better job in class than he, than he thought. And I'm proud to say that we saw that breakthrough technology applied on a car, on a Jaguar in 1999. It was the first radar on the road ever. And that was a real game changer. Radar helps make cars safer, and that arc of innovation has continued ever since. So why is it such a big deal? There's 1.3 million fatalities globally every year, and that means somebody dies in a car accident every 30 seconds. So I want to share a personal story that happened right here in southeastern Michigan just a few weeks ago. A very dear friend of mine lost his 18-year-old son in a car accident. Now, he had his whole life ahead of him, just two weeks into his college career, and now his family is left shattered. And I really believe the technology I'm talking about might have made a difference in that accident. So think about this. There we go. An extra half second of warning can mitigate 60% of accidents. So how fast is that? If you're a Detroit Tigers fan, it takes Justin Verlander's fastball a little less than half a second to cross home plate, right? So we do that all the time, a half second. We take our eyes off the road for things like adjusting dials or eating or talking to a passenger. Uh, I don't even have to mention our smartphones. We get away with it until we don't. And then it's disaster. Now this technology can give you back that extra half second, right? It can make sure the car is never distracted, even if you are. Now the automotive industry has done a tremendous job improving the safety of, of vehicles, protecting the occupant in the event of a crash. But we've plateaued in recent years. In fact, last year, fatalities went up 8%, and this year already in the first six months of 2016, they've gone up another 10%. So active safety, higher levels of automated driving are needed now to avoid the accident 
in the first place. It's no longer a nice to have, it's a have to have. So how do we make our move into automated driving? We, we took road tested safety technologies and we leapfrogged. We leveraged a global engineering team. We challenged a young group of engineers with the job of building this car. We created a dream team, if you will. They all had special skills and experiences. One was right out of college and we turned them loose. They, they used an Audi SQ5 platform, you see it here, and they immediately dismantled it. In fact, they actually laid out paper cut out of the car on the floor and reworked the wiring and sensors until they all fit. And if you think about it, automated cars need an incredible amount of firepower. They need uh, wires and connectors, they need uh, sensors and computers to get the job done. So we mixed that in with a little pizza, a little beer, many late nights, and they built that car in 10 months, which is crazy fast in the automotive world. And we named it Roadrunner. Now Roadrunner went on to make history as the first automated car to drive coast to coast, 3,400 miles, San Francisco to New York City. They drove automated mode 99% of the time, collected three terabytes of data. Now the car's computers collected all the data, but the, so did the people that went along for the ride. The car never got distracted, even when driving through gorgeous scenery. The car was never blinded by the sun. The car never got tired, even while driving through Texas for three boring days. So you get the idea. We saw everything from road kill to road rage, and Roadrunner never swayed from its job, which was getting safely to the destination. So Roadrunner, thanks to very skilled computer scientists, was able to make human-like decisions, but much, much faster than you or I could, like easing to the far edge of a, of a lane when a truck pulled up next to it. Radar worked flawlessly. My fields professor will be, will be proud of us here. Radar energy bouncing all over the place in these dense metal structures, if you will, so thank you again, Professor Olin. So it really was an amazing, it was a historic journey. It's one I'll never forget, but I knew we could do it. I just didn't think we could do it that fast. When the drive was complete, it reinforced to me what a major socioeconomic impact that active safety and self-driving cars could have, that the lives that would be saved, the reduction in congestion and emissions, mobility for the physically challenged, and I had a light bulb moment. Our entire transportation system is being disrupted. As we speak, a big change is already underway. So we continue to make progress. We recently launched an automated mobility on demand system in partnership with the government of Singapore. So what does that mean? Imagine just pulling out your phone, you open an app, and a driverless car picks you up anytime, anywhere. It will truly connect passengers to the vehicle's extended ecosystem and the vehicle to the internet. Now, what's really cool about this is we're building an ecosystem, the foundation upon which anyone can build, and that will enable new levels of on-demand personalization services. So, will you take part in this automotive transformation? Will you build that next great app? Now, as I look back and ahead, I'm struck by the awesome power of technology. I've had a front row seat. I've been very fortunate during this transportation evolution from the first computer in a car to the first radar in a car to the first automated drive across this great country of ours. But I really, uh, I've really never been more confident that we'll soon get to the point where no one will ever be hurt in a car or by a car again. And I'll do my damnedest to make that future a reality. Thank you.